Hey everybody, it's Dan, your friendly fishmonger from dansfish.com. Today I want to tell you about an amazing killifish. This is Chrome Aphiosimian poliaci. Um, it's, it's an Aphiosimian. Chrome Aphiosimian is a subgenus. And usually in the subgenus we see things like uh, Bitaniotums or Bivitatums. But this is a different species I want to show you. It's called poliaci and it's amazing, so let's take a look. Okay, here they are, a very unique killifish because they come from a volcano, but before we get into that, I've paused this to show you the difference between males and females. The females on the left there, the males on the right. This is one of the few killifish where the females have kind of a nice pattern, a couple stripes on them. He obviously has a lot longer fins and a lot more color, but for a killifish, she's pretty darn good looking. Now about their habitat, these come from Mount Cameroon. They come from 29 known collection, uh, not collection points, known populations. And because they come from a volcano, they have different water parameters in the wild than your typical West African killifish. Most West African killifish come from habitats that are basically like you would expect to find somewhat in the Amazon. You know, black water, low conductivity, meaning very soft water, and um, a very low pH often in their habitats. These are different. Because they come from a volcano, it's, it's pretty rocky soil. And uh, the streams they come from often have a lot of rocks and pebbles and things in the bottom instead of heavy plants growing, heavy plant growth and things like that. Now they do kind of hang out in the plants that grow along the margins, the edges of the stream, but it's a very different habitat. And so for West African killifish, the water parameters are a little different. Here, they're collected in water that's around 7.2 to 7.6. I'm sure there's a wider range, but that's the couple collection point uh, pH data points that I could find. Um, they're a little bit harder water than you would often find, about 5 degrees hardness or 89 parts per million of calcium uh, in, it dissolved in the water. And like a lot of West African killifish, the temperatures are fairly cool in the wild. Um, there was one report of a collection in January at 2 p.m., so the sun's out, the sun's bright, and the water was 73 degrees at that time, and expected to drop, you know, during the nighttime a few degrees. So low 70s, perfect for this fish. That being said, in captivity, they, they will take higher temperatures. Mine are currently, because it's kind of you know warmer in the summer, in the high 70s, maxing out at about 80 degrees, and they're absolutely healthy. They're doing great. Um, they just might not live as long if they're kept at a higher temperature, but that's the same of any fish, like a guppy or a swordtail or what have you, just because their metabolism speeds up. Now, that being said, this is not an annual species. You don't need to worry about these guys having a short lifespan. These will live as long as a typical live bearer, say a platy or something like that. They're very closely related to live bearers. And so they, they have a lot of the same kind of traits as far as longevity goes. Now one of the reasons that the water is a little cooler in their habitat is they come from a pretty good elevation. I found um, one collection point that was 3,000 feet above sea level, roughly. It was just under 3,000 feet above sea level. And another one that was 820 feet above sea level. So there might be higher range, there might be a lower range, but that's the range I could find where they come from naturally. So all this being said, this is a killifish which naturally comes from water which is not super soft and super acidic. So if you live in an area that, like most of the United States, has you know pretty hard alkaline water, this is probably going to be a species that you'll be able to have success with as far as breeding, because the eggs naturally uh, did not you know evolve in really soft acidic water. Now I find these to be an absolutely delightful species to keep in an aquarium. As you've seen throughout this video, they they like to hang out on the margins of the plants. They swim around in there. The males kind of come up and, and try to court a female a little bit. When they spar, when two males spar, it's absolutely stunning. They raise that dorsal fin and that anal fin to the full extent and they flare them and they do their little dance and it's, it's just a, a beautiful sight to behold. Um, they're a peaceful fish. 
I have not had any aggression issues. Now granted, this is a 75 gallon aquarium and there are quite a few plants in here as you can see. By the way, I use water sprite. I love it. I can't kill it. The fish like it. I also sometimes have uh, like Java moss on the bottom of the aquarium. I don't in this tank because I have that spawning mop back there. And as you can see, um, the males are kind of taking up residence around the spawning mop and I, I want them to spawn in that mop instead of Java moss so I can collect the eggs. Um, they are in here with a sponge filter and a box filter, very, you know, standard filtration, bare bottom aquarium, very simple. They eat flake food. Uh, now you can see kind of the filters in the setup. They eat flake food, they eat pellet food. They really, really like a nice treat of like, say, um, I don't know, uh, fruit flies or some other live food. And they like frozen food. They eat rapashi. They're very easy to do. Um, so, yeah, a, a simple fish to keep and to feed. When you think of killifish, you often think of difficulty, and these are not difficult. I'm, they're in here with guppies, and honestly, they're about as easy to keep as the guppies. So I haven't had any issues with them, except for when they very, very first came in, a little bit of ick, but that's often to be expected with new fish. You should always have some uh, external parasite medicine on hand whenever you have killifish or you know pretty much any other fish because it is likely when you first get them that the stress of shipping or transport or going to a new aquarium can cause uh, an ick outbreak but it's not any more than any other fish so uh, but it's just something to have in your kit whenever you keep fish so again the temperature in here is a little higher than in their natural habitat and they don't seem to be affected by it at all um, absolutely peaceful and delightful community fish. Uh, and that's another point I want to make. Often we think of killifish and we think of them as, okay, you have to keep them in their own aquarium. They have to be uh, separate from everyone else. They're too timid. They'll get out-competed. Um, and all these things. And that's just not been my experience with hardly any species of killifish. I find that they do well in community aquariums. I find that they're just fine. Once they settle in and learn the tank and the feeding schedule and all that, they're just as, as happy in a peaceful community aquarium as any other fish with one exception, which is you can't very well keep them in a rimless aquarium because they are expert jumpers. Almost all killifish will jump out of a tank given the opportunity, and these are no different. So please, 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 did I say please? Um, if you're gonna keep these, have a tight fitting lid. I would recommend not having a hang on back filter with these because that little gap between where the water flows back in from a hang on back filter and where the lid of the aquarium ends, they'll jump right out of that. So just be aware of that with killifish. But that aside, as long as your temperatures don't go much above 80 degrees um, and hopefully you know, or in the mid to upper 70s for most of the time, then in my experience, they're going to be just fine. So that's, oh, I should mention the size of these guys. Um, these get a little over two inches. So these are young adults. They still have a little growing to, to do, a little more film, uh, film, <laughs> fin development to, to do. But they, um, they don't get so big that they're, they're hard to keep by any means. Most killifish are, that we keep in aquariums are small and beautiful and generally fairly peaceful. They're easy fish to breed. They will lay their eggs in that spawning mop you see there, that yarn contraption hanging in the back there, kind of among the plants. And to raise them, you either remove the eggs from the mop and incubate them in some water or on some damp peat moss, or you just take the whole mop out and put it in a, say, a 10 gallon aquarium with a sponge filter. And in a week or two, you'll see little babies running around. And so feeding them with baby brine shrimp is what I do. They're big enough to take it. They're larger than a lot of uh, aquarium fish species, a lot larger than say a tetra or a barb or, or a typical egg scatterer. And um, in my experience, they're, they're quite easy to raise. So that's Aphiosimian polyaci. Um, we often call these chrome aphiosimians because that's their subgenus. And it's just a, a quick shorthand to so that anyone that knows Achilles, when you say chrome aphiosimian, automatically knows what you're talking about. You're talking about polyaci um, or bivitatum or bitaniatum or volcanum or, or, you know, some of those, any of those other ones. So, um, but anyway, beautiful species. 
I hope you like them as much as I do. And yeah, let's go to the amazing outro. Well, I hope you like those little killifish as much as I do. I think they're absolutely stunning. Um, if you like this video, if you wouldn't mind taking a moment doing that thing we always ask you viewers to do, which is like, subscribe, share, hit notification bells, all that schmaz, it would be greatly appreciated. And until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.